What is glazing? The technical answer is multiple thin layers of transparent oil paint. But what I want you to remember is glazing is pure magic. Knowing how to glaze will take your painting abilities to the next level. By the end of this video, you will know why glazing is an important painting strategy. You will also know a little bit about the science behind glazing. You will know which paints to use and which brushes to use. Most importantly, I will teach you how to glaze using oil paint. Glaze layers happen at the final stages of a painting. So let's take you to the end of the painting that you just saw right now. I'm going to keep things concise and to the point. If you give me your full attention for the next few minutes, you will acquire a solid understanding of this important painting strategy. Think about the last time that you had a sunburn. When sunburns heal, a layer of skin usually peels off your body. Take a second to remember what that skin looks like. The peel of skin is very thin, smooth, and it's possible to see light through it. Our outermost layers of skin, the epidermis, is comprised of multiple layers of skin similar to the peeled layer of skin that you just imagined. Glazing, the application of multiple thin, transparent to translucent layers, is like the epidermis of a painting, and it is important for an artist to know how to glaze so that he or she can get a more lifelike effect to their work. Light refracts through the transparent and translucent layers of a painting. In other words, it penetrates these layers and picks up any color that these layers contain. A good analogy for this concept is a seashell on the beach. Think of how the color of a seashell seems to change when it's covered with ocean water. The shell seems to change color, but in actuality, all physical characteristics of the shell remain the same. The sunlight refracting through the water alters the shell's appearance just as the glaze layers affect the final appearance of a painting. Paint colors have different characteristics. For instance, red is not just red when it comes to painting. Cadmium red, the color on the left, is extremely opaque and has a great covering power. The color on the right, alizarin crimson, is extremely transparent with a lesser covering power. Notice how you can see the blue line through the alizarin crimson but not the cadmium red. Most paint companies label the outside of their paint tubes to communicate these differences. Usually a box or circle is used to say if a paint is transparent, translucent, or opaque. A filled box or circle is a symbol stating that a color is opaque, while the opposite is true if a paint is transparent. When you glaze, you would add a painting medium such as liquid to the paint. It is easy to glaze with transparent colors such as alizarin crimson, but it is also possible to glaze with the cadmium red. In order to glaze with an opaque color, use a little bit of paint and a lot of painting medium. I would advise any beginner or novice painter to stick with transparent and translucent paints. When you glaze, have multiple soft tip brushes within reach. A variety of sizes and shapes, including round tip and fan brushes, are ideal. Now we're ready for the demonstration. I did the glazing in three sittings over 21 days. Uh, it's important to let the paint thoroughly dry between glazes. Uh, if you don't, uh, you're going to start picking up some of the previous layer. So you have to be really, really patient. Um, notice that I'm starting off by using two brushes, one to apply paint and the other to move the paint around. Uh, this is called the dry brush technique, and it's your most important glazing strategy. Uh, it gives you a smooth, untextured finish, and you want that so that you can layer another glaze right on top of it. Uh, the texture will interfere a bit. Okay, believe it or not, um, for the highlight areas, I'm using uh, titanium white. And anybody that knows uh, anything about that color, um, it is as opaque as you can get. So I make sure to use a ton, a ton of um, painting medium with it. But traditionally, uh, the uh, highlight areas are, are thicker. And you, you can mimic that with glazes. Of course, you know, it's a glaze, so you want it to be thin. But um, not to confuse you, you could use thicker paint, um, you know, in a thin way. And that's what I'm doing for the highlights. Um, the shadows get a little tricky. Um, I try to look at my reference photo as much as possible to match the shape. 
uh, but I'm very aware of their edges as well. Um, if there's a soft edge, I soften it uh, with another dry brush. Um, this is really important. Don't clean your brush with mineral spirits or terpenoid when you're glazing. Um, instead, just wipe your brush with a paper towel uh, because the paint thinners will dissolve the entire glaze and you don't want to do that. They're really thin, delicate layers. Um, if a brush becomes unworkable, just put it aside and use another soft tip brush. At this point, I'm starting to notice that uh, the layers that I was adding on the neck are getting a little bit choppy, and that's the opposite of what I want. I wanted it to be smooth. So uh, all I would do is I'd take another brush and I would uh, smooth that out. Probably wouldn't put any sort of paint on there, but I would just start picking up paint with the brush. Uh, maybe a bigger brush uh, and, you know, bigger strokes with a bigger brush. And, you know, that should uh, smooth everything out. Um, I actually work from small brushes to big brushes. You'll see me later on. You're going to start to notice I'm going to use a fan brush, uh, which is the one that's shaped like a triangle. Um, and I'll, I'll also use some bigger brushes. Uh, this is the end of the uh, first coat that I did, if I remember correctly. Yep, and this is the second uh, sitting right here. Background, I'm not too worried about. I'm just worried about, um, you know, the, the bodies in the foreground. Uh, really, the eye can focus on one thing at a time. Um, you know, if you put your hand out in front of you, and if you stare at your hand, uh, notice that the background gets blurry. So uh, I try not to focus too much on the background. I want what's in the foreground to be really crisp. Uh, I'm very concerned about the edges. That's why I'm doing uh, the red over in there. And any time that I add too much, I just add a little bit of titanium white and a lot of medium, um, you know, to kind of even things out. You can't see my reference photo, but it's there. I check it every few minutes. Um, at this point, the neck is about done and the face is about done. I might add one more layer on top of that, but I'm looking at the face on the right, and I'm looking at her shoulder, and I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, paper towels come in really handy with this. Um, it's going to happen that you put down too much paint. All you really need is a paper towel, and you know, since it's such a thin layer of paint, you could pull it right up. I did something a little bit different with the hair. I actually applied um, a layer of um, the painting medium to it, uh, and then I glazed on top of that. You get a slightly different effect with that, but that's a variation of glazing. I'm adding some fresh paint. Watch how I smooth it out. You're going to notice that I'm going to use a totally different brush to smooth it out. There we go don't want hard edges. I want the opposite of that. I want to put the paint down and I want to make sure that it's smooth. I want to make sure that the shadows, um, you know, kind of blend into the highlights and so forth. The most problematic area to me right now is her shoulder, but I'm going to fix that. Uh, this is the third day. I let the paint dry and I'll just do another layer on top of that. Sometimes you just don't want to argue with it. You let it dry and then you say, okay, I'm going to put another layer on top of that. Um, it was too dark, so I would add a little bit more of the titanium white, but I would still thin it out. And you'll see me do that in a second. And I'm sorry, it's not just titanium white. Titanium white uh, with the other colors that I used, uh, which I believe was uh, alizarin crimson and... Um, I used, uh, I kind of used a, um, a yellow as well uh, with that, with the titanium white. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm just smoothing everything out. Basically medium and a little bit of paint. And there we go, we're done. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.